Congressman Mandrew, thanks for joining us. We now know who you'll be running against in November, Amy Kennedy. What's your assessment of her? Well, you know, I, I don't know her extremely well. Um, my assessment would be she wanted to run for Congress. Well, you know, welcome. I mean, I, I look forward to uh, having a good and, and robust uh, you know, campaign and, and, and having a, a nice level of discussion with her. Is there an extra dimension of difficulty given that she comes out of the Kennedy family? Well, everybody has a different thought on that. So some people say it really doesn't matter because she just, you know, married into the family and really isn't a Kennedy. Other people feel that it does. You know what I think, Michael? I think that what's most important are ideas, vision, hard work, experience. Those are all the things that I think I bring to the table and have brought to the table for years. I mean, I, you know, if there's one thing you can say about me, you may or may not like me, I don't know, but boy, I know our district. I've walked it, I've talked it, I've met people um, from one end of the district to the other, and I've spent a lot of years serving, and uh, I, I really want to give to this district. I want to give back and make that difference. So I can only speak for myself. Um, what she brings to it by marrying into the Kennedy family is certainly that she will have added finances and added connections. I'm cognizant of that. I'm going to work hard raising money um, and we're going to do well raising money. I don't know that we'll raise as much as, as she does. And I don't know if we'll have the, you know, national and possibly worldwide connections that she does. And, uh, you know, I don't have a, a mansion on the beach, but all those things put aside, the people in South Jersey are good, hardworking, middle-class people that want somebody that's going to break their back for them. And that's me. She defeated the South Jersey Democratic machine that you used to be a part of. <laughs> Is the machine a little, uh, the machine back Bridget Harrison? who finished a distant second, ran a good campaign, but uh, had a bad election night. Uh, is the machine weakened? You know, that, that's an interesting question. I mean, it's, it's a one-time event going against, as you pointed out before, somebody who has a name with a lot of notoriety. Uh, I, I didn't really, in all honesty, look at all of the internals of what happened during that entire campaign uh, and why things worked out the way they did. It certainly isn't good for it, but on the other hand, in many other localities and many other places they did, the Democratic machine did as it usually does. There is a conflict in the Democratic Party right now. So, you know, and it's not for me to, you know, hypothesize about it or to discuss it uh, a great deal because I'm a Republican now. But I will say this as somebody who was a Democrat, the reason I left is because the Democratic Party is lurching to the left. That is part of what Amy Kennedy was about. It was really appealing to the super progressive people who have a totally different vision of America, who have a totally different ideas about America, many of whom literally openly on television and uh, in the media literally say they just want to dismantle America and change it fundamentally. I do not. America is a great and wonderful, extraordinary, exceptional American exceptionalism place. And America is such a great place that the way our founding fathers set it up is that when we do go astray, and of course we do, we're human beings, that you almost through the process of Americanism can correct where you've gone astray. You can make it better. You can work through. We always are self-improving and making better. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with tweaking certain things. What is wrong is wanting to destroy the American ethic and the America we love. What is wrong is, you know, allowing or condoning violence. What is wrong is defunding police. What is wrong is open borders. The, pre the, the, president, the president you promised undying support for called Black Lives Matter a hate group in the past week. You believe that Black Lives Matter is a hate group? I think there are many good people who follow different groups. 
And certainly there are peaceful people who love peace and want to make positive change that followed the group because of the name. Black Lives Matter. They do. Lives matter. Human souls matter. All lives matter. But what folks have to do is read the actual philosophy, and even Michael, if you haven't, I suggest you do, of Black Lives Matter. It is a Marxist organization. It openly and freely, it's not something I'm saying about it to be mean, it is what it is. It doesn't believe in the nuclear family. It doesn't believe in the America that we know. We know that the squad in Congress just came out with a plan where they said we have to destruct America and reconstruct it and completely change it. This is stuff I don't agree with. Uh, you, uh, you and Donald Trump <clears throat> are still allies. Uh, there's a lot of criticism of the president over his handling of the coronavirus crisis. Do you think he's done a good job? First of all, the president is working with violence in the streets, tremendous international uh, conflict and deception in certain ways that he's had to deal with. And he has also had to deal, obviously, with the coronavirus. And I will tell you something. When this first started, the president was one of the first people to come out and say that he was going to stop travel. He was going to have a travel ban with China. Let's understand what went on here. The World Health Organization did not tell the truth. They said this was nothing to worry about from person to person. And that's a quote from the WHO. And we spend millions of dollars of your tax dollars and my tax dollars there. That's unacceptable. Then we wanted to have the CDC go into Wuhan to really look and see what's happening because obviously this didn't come from a wet meat market, which has been around forever in China. This is something that came from a lab, probably, but we don't know because we're not told the truth. And he's been pushing for the truth, but China wouldn't allow it in, wouldn't allow our people in. But has he, Thirdly, but has he shown enough leadership since then to entrust the job to him? of getting, guiding this country through the crisis? I don't know. We're, we're, we are making it through the crisis. I mean, um, he's given a tremendous amount of power to the states to work as they want to, to do as what they want to in their particular state. Some people think too much power to the states. Uh, he was able to, you know, create the respirators we need, radically increase testing. It's so easy to look at somebody else and saying, oh, they're not doing what they should be doing. Uh, the reality is there was no easy answer to this. We haven't gone through something like this, as you know, in a very, very long time. Uh, and the reality is that we're gradually opening up the country and that the economy is actually doing better than we ever expected it would do. Am I happy with everything? No. Uh, it's a biological virus that we still don't have all the answers to how to cure it or stop it. And that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. But you yeah. can't blame somebody for a disease that occurs that was none of their doing. And in fact, somebody who stopped it earlier on. And I don't always defend the president. The president and I have different ideas on certain things because I am loyal to somebody or think that somebody has done some good and really made some change uh, in America that needed to be said. Uh, I, I think that's good. Uh, but we will have differences of opinion on certain things. And I've, I voted differently in certain times. You've been a Republican for a little more than six months now. How's that going? It's going good. Uh, I will tell you, uh, and, and I have a lot of fun with this. Everybody talks, and they should, about Amy's election. So I was going into mine, and I actually had somebody who was working very, Bob Patterson was working real hard against me, spent, I don't know, double or triple the amount of money that I did. I, I spent very little money, not because I didn't have it, because I just didn't want to spend it. I wanted to hold it for the general, um, but really beat me up pretty hard. And uh, it was on TV and so forth. Um, and people said, oh, you're going to be a man without a country. The, the Democrats, the, the, you know, just a few of the Democrats who, who really didn't like me. There's a lot of Democrats that, thank God, still do. But they said, you're going to be a man with no country. Nobody's going to really, um, you know, support you or help you. The Republicans are going to be mad at you. The Democrats, oh, you know, all these terrible, dire forecasts that came out from folks. 
I don't know if you did see the numbers, but, uh, and, and again, this was a guy who did work hard against me. I got 81, almost 82% of the vote. It's one of the highest vote tallies that any Republican has gotten in a primary. Uh, the Congress people have been great. They have been supportive. When I do disagree on like, for example, some labor issues, uh, I've always been pro-union, the president knows that. And on some other issues, nobody has said a word. Unlike when I was in the Democratic Party and I disagreed with something and I was told that I would have to obey and I was told that my life would be hell if I didn't, uh, there's not a word said. So right. I think it's going great. All right. percent's a pretty good number. What is a pretty good number? 81%. 81%. That is a pretty good number. Congressman Jeff Mandrews, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, Michael, it's always great to see you. You are one of the real deans, uh, and you are one of the folks that really do it the right way. Objective, honest, and a good man. Thanks, Jeff.